Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about whether or not the Bible is the precondition of truth. Now this idea or this topic came to my attention when I was going through Twitter in the morning, going through my football news, and then I saw a lad called Philip Goff, I'm not sure whether he's a professor or where, what his background is, uh, retweeting a post by uh, Jordan Pearson where he says, in the West the Bible is the precondition of or for truth. And this is not the first time he has said this as well. Because previously in a discussion with Joe Rogan, if I can find the clip, I'll put it up as well, he also discusses the Bible being the precondition of truth. So it isn't that the Bible is true. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth. Now, what I found so interesting about this response is because I am not really sure whether Philip Goff, like, answers or really is responding to Jordan Peterson's point. Because, of course, at the front or at face value, Philip Goff seems to have quite a decent point when he says, well, how exactly is the Bible the precondition for the truth that water is H2O? This guy is giving philosophy a bad name. Well, this seems to be proposing a certain form of truth, and it seems to have a certain perspective in which it's arguing from. And this is a very common argument against the, argu the idea that the Bible is a precondition of truth. However, the only problem here is like, what exactly does it mean when Jordan Peterson says... So it isn't that the Bible is true. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth. Is he saying that the Bible is the source of all truth, or is he arguing from a more fundamental analysis, almost a psychological analysis? And I think that the answer is the secondary. In order to understand this, let's first go over what Philip Goff argues for. And what Philip Goff argues for is the idea that the Bible is the source of all truth. That's interpretation that Philip Goff is arguing for. He's saying, well, Jordan Pearson is wrong because the Bible doesn't talk about water being H2O or doesn't talk about every single truth we know. And that would be, I would say, a very face value approach to it, a very literal form of an understanding. And I would say, well, yeah, that's right. Um, I think that it would be absurd to say that the Bible is the source of all forms of truth in the world in that form of precondition of truth. However, I would say at the same time that it kind of misses a point of the argument that Jordan Peterson is trying to raise. And when people say the Bible is fundamental for society, they're not saying that every single thing in society is found within the Bible, but rather they're saying that the structure provided by the Bible is absolutely vital for the development of society and that a lot of fundamental presuppositions in society are stemming from the Bible. For example, the idea that life has intrinsic value, that is something which you could say the precondition for the belief that life has intrinsic value is found within the Bible. You could say that the structure which the Bible provides that humans are made in the image of God is the precondition for us to believe that life has intrinsic value and that regardless of what situation life is found within, you have to try to protect it, especially human life, because that is made imago Dei. In the same way, you could say, well, the structure, the legal system that we were provi provided today is formed on a Roman structure. Now you could say, well, some of the laws today weren't found in ancient Rome, but the Republic, which was created, and you could say, well, the, history, the history geeks out there might say, well, you could take that back to de democracy in Greece, and you could say, well, the, the democracy in Greece was a precondition for the democracy we see today, even though it is not fundamentally the same. And and I think that this form of analysis is more close is, is closer to the discussion that Jordan Peterson is saying. He's saying, well, the structure provided within the Bible is a precondition for us to know the truth. And well, why might this be the case? Well, I think one of the reasons is the focus on the objective nature of reality and our objective understanding of the world. We are made imago Dei, which allows us to have an understanding, a divine understanding. Well, of course, we're not looking at it from God, but we do have that element of understanding, the ability to be shepherds of being and, and unveil the world around us in an accurate way, or at least a pretty accurate way. And, and that, you could say, is, well, that is one of the fundamental pre presuppositions, perhaps, the precondition, you could say, for truth. For example, how on earth are we meant to trust our senses? You have a lot of very, very good arguments throughout history, like Cartesian skepticism, a lot of biological developments seem to point towards the fact that we are unable to reach the world. So in that sense, you could say, well, in order to reach the world around us, we have to somewhat accept this fundamental structure that we do indeed have a, a knowledge of the world which is true and reliable. And you could say, well, where does that come from? You could perhaps say that perspective comes from the Bible. And that seems to be quite true. Well, because if you look at the history of epistemology, you can go back to the time of Plato, Plato did ne never argued that we had direct understanding of the world. In fact, he argued that we 
we were in a cave looking out towards imperfect understandings of the world. And under that perspective, you could say, well, un under the Platonic and Greco-Roman worldview, truth was not seen as something which was inherent within the world or achievable within the world, but rather had to be reached through the divine forms or a transcendent of the physical into the into the new or whatever you want to call it, right? And Kant makes a very similar argument saying that certain forms of reality cannot be directly 100% or certainly understood or, or reached out to. And you could say, well, under that perspective, truth cannot be held because what is truth? Well, truth is that which applies or is found in the world, or it's, at least there is some sense of correspondence with that in the world. If, if this pen was red and I think it's black, you would say, and I said that this pen was black, you would say, I'm lying, I'm not saying the truth. In the same way that our interaction with the world is fundamentally based upon these fundamental presuppositions that we can reach out to a real world reliably. And you can say in that form, the Bible is a precondition of truth because Christianity does provide that worldview. And then you could say, well, how about the people in China who never knew about um, Christianity or never knew about these things? Well, in fact, in China, a lot of times throughout history, absolute truth was not necessarily something that anyone worked towards. It was it was almost like a Hindu idea of reincarnation and, and this continual enlightenment towards moksha or enlightenment in, in more kind of plain uh, vocabulary. It's this idea that you're not fully understanding of that which is good. You're not really understanding which is which is uh, perfect. And as a result, there's this karmic kind of cycle in which you have to work through in order to reach a certain goal. And you could look at um, Eastern, most of Eastern, at least East Asian uh, philosophy and development through that lens. It's this idea that you have to go through this, this realm of obscurity into the, into the world of the pure, the unknown. And so you do see this idea that the Bible is a precondition of truth because in the situations or in the worlds which do not have such a biblical basis, that idea, that core of truth is then shifted or, or veiled. Instead, you look at something which is more subjective and you could say, well, as a result, the, the Bible is a precondition of truth because without the Bible, you do not have this objective truth. Now, another way you can look at it is the idea of multiple gods. It's the classical discussion between monotheism and polytheism. Under polytheism, you have multiple gods and multiple ways of living, which are all correct. For example, in the ancient Greeks, you'll have the shrine of Poseidon, you'll have the shrine of Ar Artemis, you'll have the shrine of of Aphrodite and different shrines to different gods. And in some of those shrines, you, you were meant to be a prostitute to the shrine and you'll have like orgies all the time in that shrine, right? In another shrine, you will have to give a certain different type of sacrifice. Or maybe before you had to set sail, you'll have to do a certain rite in the shrine of Neptune or Poseidon or wherever you are in the world. And that is the same across most of the different areas in throughout the world, regardless of whether you're in a more Europe, Eurocentric places or in China. Or, or in India, for example, you'll have a, you'll have a household god, like some people would choose to uh, worship Ganesh more so than another god, and that would lead in and that would call out different forms of worship and practices. And some of these practices are contradictory, right? The, the shrine of Artemis, right? The, the idea of the eternal chaste maiden is contradictory to uh, a, a room filled with orgies and parties. However, both of them are acceptable ways to live, given the adherence to the certain code provided by a certain god. And as a result, what you see here is that, well, the distinction between polytheism and monotheism isn't one just of metaphysics, but it is also one of psychology. It is fundamentally the structure of the world which is being analyzed here, right? It, when you have a polytheistic religion, in some ways you are supporting that subjective nature of the world, that there are multiple different forms of truth. And instead of a scientific way, which says, well, you can't, ha or a philosophical way, which says you can't have two contradictions in under a polytheistic worldview, you can have multiple contradictions. And as a result, what the Bible being the precondition of truth means is to say, well, without the Bible, you no longer have the objective grounding of one form of truth. You, you're open to this subjective form of truth, this world of obscurity, which you then cannot move forward. And in that sense, you would say that the monotheistic basis of the Bible is fundamentally the precondition of truth, which is being talked about here. So I hope this answers the question of, is the Bible the precondition of truth? If you view it literally, then the answer is no. If you want to say, well, okay, all truth is found literally within the Bible, fine. But if you want to say that, well, let's take it from a more psychological and a more nuanced view of the, the, the idea, I would say that, well, there is good reason to believe that the Bible is a precondition of truth 
precisely because when you're talking about truth, it is fundamentally, at least objective truth, that is fundamentally found within the realms of a Judeo-Christian worldview, which is established in contrast to the more subjective worldviews provided by other religions around the world, including other nihilistic forms of philosophy. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me and it really helps the channel grow. Stay safe, my friends. See you soon. Thank you for watching and goodbye. I'll see you in the next one.